Lieutenant, Captain, Colonel, they're all just titles. They don't mean the same after your convoy gets assaulted by rockets, after you crawl out of your wreck and see the shattered bits of metal everywhere, the smell of smoke filling your nostrils in spite of your eyes watering, you can see your comrades in arms laying on the ground, stiff and silent, their uniforms brown and red like some sort of twisted tie-dye, arms and legs separated from the torsos of those men and women you called your family and you alone are alive, well then frankly at that point your rank is meaningless. Before you condemn Corporal Brooks for having these thoughts instead of being a good little soldier and pressing on through it, let me point out that he endured basic training the same as the men and women whose bodies litter the ground around him, and there's no chain of command when you're clawing your way through the Afghan desert called Dasti Margo, the desert of death, with an empty canteen and a gun under persistent sun. After a second day alone in the heat with his own thoughts, memories, regrets, not spending enough time with his family, not asking Gloria to the prom, dropping out of college. Corporal Brooks looked at the assault rifle in his hands, and in that moment alone, with his thoughts, only one idea entered his head. The best way to end things? Just one trigger pull, and he wouldn't have to hear the growling stomach or feel the aching dryness in his throat. Why not? He thought as he kneeled down in the sand to ask God for forgiveness before picking up his rifle. He looked down as he placed the muzzle at the base of his skull, and in that moment, his eyes caught the glimmer of something in the sand. Not knowing why, Corporal Brooks was compelled to put his rifle down. He pulled the object from the sand's grasp and began to examine it, a silver object resembling an old oil lamp. A scorpion crawled out of it, and he cast a container to the ground. The eight-legged creature then scampered off, and he picked the lamp up again. As he did, he was immediately struck by its beauty and craftsmanship. He must have sat there in the sand for hours admiring it. When his eyes finally grew tired, he looked around and the sky had turned pink and red while the sun faded away in the distance. All was quiet as it had been until the first time he heard the voice. Greetings to you. Brooks turned around to find what can only be described as a standing shadow. With that explanation, he knew this was the source of the voice he heard almost in his mind and outside of it at once, if that makes any sense. He reached for his gun as the voice said, You have no need for that. It would not help you. Corporal Brooks stopped and regarded the form before him, not without undue suspicion. Who are you, and what do you want? He managed to croak out. Two. The thing paused as though considering the best way to explain itself. You will have to pardon me. It has been at least a century since I've had the opportunity to speak with a mortal. I am here to do as I have been tasked, and as for the first question, we Jin have no names such as those of your kind. Wait, Brooks responded. You mean Jin, as in Genie? The specter takes a second pause as though to consider what was being asked. Yes, you are familiar with my duties and the contract we now share. Whosoever holds the Mizbah holds me until three requests are granted. Anyone else in any other situation would have let a few rounds escape the chamber before worrying about all these questions. But in that moment, Corporal Brooks thought to himself, what have I to fear at this point? And so he responded to the entity before him, if you are what you claim, then I need water. Your wish is mine. Come out. Before he could finish his statement, Brooks found himself in the middle of a body of water, kicking and splashing with the lamp in his hand. He felt something grace his face that he had never thought would appear on it again. A smile. Then some water entered his mouth. Salt water. He looked around for the shore and saw nothing but an endless expanse of blue waves. Then as he searched his surroundings, he saw fins. Shark fins which were fast approaching. Jin, he yelled. Jin! You sound displeased, Master. I wanted to drink water, not get eaten in it. I neglected to tell you, Master, one must be careful and specific with requests. Fine. Just get me out of here. No, wait. I want to be back at home in the States and be worth over a million dollars. Very well. Corporal Brooks found himself lying behind a dumpster in a pair of torn pants and gloves, with holes where the finger covering should be. Looking around, he found a shard of glass and saw his reflection. It looked as though he hadn't been near a razor in months. Jin! Yet again, you are displeased, my master? What is this? 
your disguise. I do not want them to find you. After all, you are only on your second wish. Find me? Who is they? What are you- Have you not seen today's paper? Though lacking a face, for a moment, Brooks thought it smirked as it handed him a newspaper. Lo and behold, his name in black and white on the front page. The words wanted, dead or alive. Two million dollar bounty for the assassination of... He put it down, unable to stomach the rest. His eyes lifted to see nothing but a brick wall. Stammering out loud, he muttered, This can't be real. This just can't be real. In that moment, Brooks decided to walk into the street, convinced that Jin was playing some sort of magical joke on him. Brooks got less than five feet away from the sidewalk when his hopes were dashed, as he saw a man reading the newspaper, who just so happened to look in his direction and squint. His mouth dropped as he looked down at Brooks's picture and back up before motioning to people in the storefront and pointing at Brooks frantically. Before he could react, there was a crowd of people moving quickly in Brooks's direction. His only response was to run. People seemed to be coming from everywhere, and in a panic he began to think. Maybe my wishes are too selfish. Maybe I need to make this less about my needs and more about the needs of others. I wish I could bring the crowd to peace. Wait, that's it. Jin! You saw the stress, Master. I'm going to give you something you can't get wrong. Not as... As the crowd begins to overtake him, Brooks yells out. It was the one wish that would solve everything. The one wish that would prevent more people like the ones I recently lost in the ambush from needlessly dying. Peace. I wish for peace! Your wish is my command. Corporal Brooks's body was discovered on the outskirts of Dusty Margo. The coroner ruled his death as a combination of heat stroke and dehydration. However, odd burn marks across his throat were never identified and remain a mystery. He was found clutching his rifle in one hand and an old silver oil lamp in the other. An oil lamp that now resides in the office of his commanding officer, Colonel William T. Jones.